Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In last week's episode, we took a look at hands that were played during the three year anniversary celebration at Live at the Reserve in Toledo, Ohio. This week, we're back in Toledo to play in the 10K in a day. We'll also take a deep dive into some of the technical aspects of being a successful tournament poker player. And we even conjure up a little rat map, so you wanna stick around for some of that. You know, putting these videos together really has become a labor of love for this game, so again, I wanted to say thanks for sharing these with your friends and family. Your response to the channel truly tells me you've enjoyed the shenanigans, so we're gonna keep doing what we're doing, unless you'd like to see something else. And if that's the case, go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below. And while you're there, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button. It sure helps this channel out a lot. So enough of this chit chat, let's get into the action. Whoever said patience is a virtue must have been a poker player in a tournament because today's start is about as exciting as watching paint dry. Other than the blinds, I did not have a single playable hand until level three. Just look at these. That's when I decided that I'd have to try and make a hand and I find myself staring down at nine seven off suit like it was a pair of aces. So I go ahead and make the call because I can't just fold my way to a win and I'm on the button. I suspect the small blind woke up with some sort of hand as he min clicks to 800. Both the big blind and middle position limper decide to play along, and I try to hold on to some sort of table image as I make the call as well, praying for a really crappy flop. Killer Kara does a fairly decent job of getting us what we were looking for as she lays down this four way flop at 478 rainbow. The small blind then leads out for a thousand, and everyone calls. The turn is another low card, and this time small blind leads out for 2k, both the big blind and our middle position limper bails. But I'm not buying what this fella's selling, mostly because this board texture doesn't really favor a pre-flop aggressor, and unless he has something like pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, or but if that were the case, I suspect he would have raised more than a min click pre-flop, and certainly a pot size bet once he had four callers. So I go ahead and make the call because, well, I hit middle pair. <laughs> and we all know that that can be harder to do than to try to fit a giraffe into a phone booth. The river is what I believe to be an inconsequential brick because the small blind checks it over to me. And at this point, I'm now convinced this guy was bluffing on the turn. Else he would have continued his aggression had he had a real hand. Now it's time to go for some extremely thin value because up till now it's been a fold fest for me. So I toss out a bet of 3000 into an $11,000 pot. Now I suppose the small blind thought I was making some sort of positional bet as he wastes little time in calling. Then I turn over my mid pair for the win. If you want to be a successful poker player, especially tournament poker, you've got to rely heavily on your ability to make profitable expected value plays on the fly. And it's also going to come down to your experience on the felt that's going to help you make the necessary adjustments to your game, especially when navigating to get to the correct EV play. Still, it's inevitable that you can make all the right moves and still lose the pot. An example of this would be a turned flush gets cracked by a full house on the river by that flop two pair something we've all experienced, right? So our river rat wants to know, should you call an all in holding only a flush draw for your tournament life, especially when the board is paired? Action is intense when our villain decides to make a notable preflop raise and folds go around to our hero on the button. She looks down at pocket tens, then makes the call. Our dealer then puts out the flop of five, four, four, two hearts. Then our villain decides to lead out for roughly a two thirds pot size bet. Our hero then provides a dramatic and somewhat thoughtful moment of reflection, then decides to shove a remaining stack of just under 100 K, mostly for protection against a potential flush. Now our villain dives deep into the tank as he knows that with this hand, he's got roughly nine outs twice to make this call. We interrupt our regularly scheduled hand analysis to bring you some exciting math about poker. 
According to our friends at Red Shark Poker, our gambling villain is currently taking his time to make the call as he's trying to figure out his best move to win this hand by calculating his outs. He realizes that with two more cards to come, he's most likely a two to one underdog to hit his flush and double through our hero. He also is thinking that even if he's against a premium pocket pair, he still has about a 70-30 chance of winning by showdown. So our villain needs to decide for his tournament life whether or not he should gamble it up and make the call. Our River Rat reporter is still on site trying to make heads or tails out of what happens next with our villain, so we'll bring you updates later on in the broadcast. And now back to our 10K in a day with our hand analysis already in progress. Our dealer seems to toss out some magic pixie dust into the air and delivers the Queen of Hearts on the turn. <laughs> we see a joyful smile come across our villain as if he were thinking about the Grinch who was about to steal Christmas from little Cindy Lou Who. And just like that, all of his aspirations for winning this hand come to a screeching halt as the last card on the table is the Four of Clubs, giving the win to our hero who now scoops in the pot with a river full house. For our next hand of note, we find our old friend the professor from Finley. <laughs> well, it's not really him. He didn't want to be on camera, so I guess we'll just have to use our imaginations. The last time we played together, he played tighter than a drum, and from what I can tell, he only played premium hands. Today doesn't seem to be that much different, as he gets transferred to our table and immediately finds Ace-King under the gun. Clearly, he's up to speed on his GTO strategy, and he figures to make a significant raise right away in order to take this pot down right here, right now. Folds go around to the button, who sees an opportunity for a double up holding his pocket nines, and he wastes very little time shoving his remaining stack in the middle. That's when Scotty, our rock'em, suck'em robot player, he finds a couple of red ladies, and he goes over the top in an order to isolate. Unfortunately, our professor failed to recognize this as a play, and he shoved his remaining stack in as well. But no offense to the professor. I just want to ask, did he really need to shove with Ace-King off suit after two all-ins in front of him? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. For now, let's take a listen to see how this played out in real time. There we go. Boom. Nice hand, man. Here's the boat. Rocket. Sock Nice job. I'm in the big blind and take a snap look see at Ace Queen off suit, and folds go around to one of our other table short stacks in middle position. He makes a call with one of his remaining large chips over to Pat. Now she's looking down what I guess is a premium hand as she raises to 5K in what I suspect is her way of telling me to GTHOMP. <laughs> Let's get the heck out of my pot. And I guess that works for Bonnie on the button, but not for Bill. Oh, no, 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 no. Now I suspect he's doing a little prospecting here as he tosses out a limp Colin chip. Now he might have a low to mid pair, maybe a suited connector. I think it's doubtful too much that he has a primo hand. I think he would have three bet out of position in the small blind. But it's hard to tell really, mostly because he's been complaining about not having playable hands. So I draw to the conclusion that he's got shenanigans on his mind. So I make a futile effort and I take my short stack to District 13's parking lot. May the odds be ever in my favor. I'm all in. Now that move made for an interesting oopsie poopsie moment for me as our middle position limper now decides to shove his remaining 27,400 into the middle and Pat glances over and watches him pull out a rebuy out of his pocket. Well, I think she decides this might be a little bit of a reverse tell, so she wisely steps out of the way and she figured Bill was going to call, but apparently not for the reason she had thought. I knew you were doing that. Oh, I'm gambling. And when the cards are tabled, our middle position limp shove is holding on to four or five of clubs, and Bill, <laughs> he tosses out king four of spades. Here's our run out. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you our newest River Rat inductee, 
Congratulations, Bill. And the best part about this bust out? We're able to rebuy back into the game. In poker, what is the benefit of a rebuy if you bust out of tournament play action? Is it A, the ability to allow yourself to get back into the game knowing that you will have less than a 15% chance of winning the thing? B, the ability to position yourself for revenge on the river rat that just busted you? C, the ability to minimize variance in the action of the game and give yourself another opportunity to win the tournament? D, all of the above. If you guessed D, then you most likely prefer poker tournaments over cash games. Thanks to our friends at Pokerology.com for providing us with this reality of poker tournament action. It helps ease my mind a little bit whilst I dust off my ego, pull out my rebuy dollars from my pocket, and see if I can win 10k in a day. On this hand, I opt for quiz answer B as I look down at ace nine of hearts in the small blind and decide to raise to 3500. I got a little bit of revenge in mind, mostly because Bill, who also limped in on the button, he decided to call knowing that I'm probably steaming from when he busted me only a few hands prior. <laughs> He's right. The big blind folds and both middle position and Bill make the call. The flop comes 258 with two hearts and I lead out for a half pot size bet. The middle position limp caller gives a bit of a thought here. Maybe they made a pre-flop call with a couple of suited Broadway cards, or maybe they were playing suited ace rags like I'm holding. I can't even imagine they would fold any sort of middling pocket pairs with this flop. Whatever their reason, I begin mental cha-chas in my brain as they toss their cards into the muck, and now it's over to Bill. With top pair, this latest River Rat inductee shoved his remaining stack in faster than Phil Hellmuth did when he had pocket aces up against Jennifer Tilly's pocket jacks, and we saw that action at the Rivers Casino during Poker Night in America. Hellmuth will call with aces and jacks for Jennifer Tilly in seed one. Uh, make it 18. And I guarantee you those little hairs on the back of Phil Hellmuth's head are standing up right now. Oh, what to do, what to do. 4,000. Uh, I'm not sure. I just know. How much do you have behind you? I think I have another, uh, another 20 now. Yeah, I did one, yeah. That's yeah. my profit. She bets enough to put Hellmuth all in, and he can't get the chips in the middle fast enough. All right. I'm obviously good. Nice. Boom. I'm feeling good. Jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Uh, 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 uh. Nine, ten. Oh, I got more outs. Jack. Oh. Ah, nine and a nine or a jack. How many outs do I have? Six. Okay, I have six. six. Wait, let her count. All right. <laughs> Wait, let me count. All right, yeah, hold on a second. <laughs> I have six, six I outs. have 38. Come on, like a computer. You have 38? Yeah. Okay, I need a jack or jack. Oh! oh! Man, just like Tilly, I'm able to add my name to the River Rat Hall of Fame with my River Nine of Clubs. I'll do it for this week's episode, and though I was able to avenge my rebuy with this knockout, I was unable to grab some of that 10k in a day. It just wasn't in the cards. So come on back next Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, to see if we can turn our tournament buy-ins into cash payouts. There's going to be a ton of excitement as we meet new faces and press our luck to the test once more during the 40k in a day. For now, you should go and watch one of my other episodes. I've got them posted right here. Man, if you don't mind, please hit that like and subscribe button as it's helping our channel out a lot. Until next week, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.